Right Here we go. History in the making. Green, green, green. <laughs> Watermelon Man has a smashing good time in Nashville, and now it's time to take to the streets of Chicago. Hi, this is Brett McMillan. You're listening to the Riley Auto Parts Pit Reporters. With me this week, Bruce Martin from Speed Sport and Davey Siegel from Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. It's the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters on the Performance Racing Network. Presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts, your professional parts people. Now, here's your host, Brett McMillan. Hey, welcome to the show. Glad to have Bruce and Davey here. and Glad to have you with us as well. I do want to start off the show by uh, letting, acknowledging that uh, it, we know it's been a very difficult week for Jimmy Johnson and his wife, Chandra Johnson, and our thoughts and prayers are with the family. I'm sure you've heard the story by now that uh, Chandra's mom and dad and nephew uh, were all killed in a murder-suicide at her home, at their home in Oklahoma, and Jimmy has withdrawn and uh, from the race at Chicago this weekend, and we want to let them know that our thoughts and prayers are with them, and I can imagine it's just an incredibly difficult time for them and that family. Uh, let's move on, though, and we'll go on to what happened in Nashville this last weekend. I tell you, Bruce, heck of a race. Some three wide, a lot of three wide action, and uh, a, a pretty impressive win by the Watermelon Man. Anybody who doesn't appreciate that race probably doesn't appreciate good racing because that was one of the best races from start to finish that I've seen in quite a while. It was fierce. It was clean. It was dramatic. It had lots of drama. Like you said, three wide passing in the turns. That's pretty good on a track like Nashville Super Speedway. And it also ended up with a, a really good storyline with Ross Chastain driving a very clean race. He was still aggressive, but he was clean, and I think that takes a lot of the pressure and a lot of the heat off of him for what he'd been going through since the start of the season with what a lot of people thought may have been reckless driving. Davey, what did you think of the race? I agree wholeheartedly with, with Bruce there. I, I don't think that if you dislike that race, you really were watching intently because that had pretty much everything you could possibly want. You had three wide racing throughout the pack and for the lead for multiple laps end on end you had a, an interesting storyline and, and a worthy winner in the form of ross chastain snapping a winless drought doing so in his race team's backyard so to speak of nashville with track house racing it was a pretty good one and look not every race as we know guys is going to be a barn burner it's not going to set the world on fire this one was not in the top 10 races of all time but it was pretty damn good all things considered right especially given the backdrop of nashville super speedway i remember two years ago guys when this was added to the schedule and everybody was just kind of like, okay, well, Nashville's cool, but the track's probably going to be eh. And the last two years, we have had really solid racing. And in my opinion, some of the best racing we've seen at this next-gen car has been on the mile-and-a-half intermediate-type ovals. That was no surprise that we saw again at Nashville. Well, Bruce, you alluded to the fact that it's been a, a difficult six weeks or so for, for Ross Chastain. Uh, especially coming off of Darlington when Rick Hendrick complained about his driving. Uh, right, and then just, Justin Marks, his team owner, said, all right, i got to sit down. We're going to have a little chat. And, and I had a chance to talk to Ross in Victory Lane about how difficult this time has been for him. There's no doubt. It's been very public and a lot of criticism. Um, and anybody that's competitive is going to get criticized. And, look, I made my more than my fair share of mistakes. But for every kid out there that's ever going to be competitive with anything in life, you're going to get criticized. you got to trust your process, trust your people, trust what you believe and what the big man's plan upstairs is for you, and go to work. Get up every day and outwork them. It's, uh, it's absolutely incredible what this team has done, what we're capable of. I'm so happy for Phil Surge and everybody on this one team. And, you know, he's – He's acknowledging that, yeah, I've made some mistakes, but, hey, everybody makes mistakes at times, Bruce, and it's a part of him growing into being a cup driver, right? A lot of people don't realize, but his time in cup racing has not really been that long. He's still relatively new into this sport, and the fact is you ought to be able – there's going to be times you're going to fall down you got to get back up. It's the same thing as any other professional athlete. Even Peyton Manning only won three games his rookie season with the Indianapolis Colts before he had a, you know, a Hall of Fame career. But the thing is, I don't know what probably affected him more, whether it was the criticism he got from Rick Hendrick, because Rick Hendrick isn't the type of guy that goes out and criticizes rival drivers, or maybe just sitting down and talking to Justin Marks. I've always found Justin Marks to be a very inspirational type guy. 
And I think that when he sat down and talked to Ross about what needed to be done, I think that really sunk into him. There was a period there right after that where Ross didn't seem to be the same old Ross. But what we saw Friday night, or I'm sorry, Sunday night, was a new and improved Ross Chastain. I mean, that's the thing, Davey, and that was the question that I think everybody was asking. Since Darlington, it had not been the same Ross Chastain. He wasn't having the success. He dropped from first in points to fifth. Okay, yeah, he was still only like 25 points out of first place, but it wasn't the same Ross Chastain running up front who had been earlier this year, and we were wondering if he'd lost some of that, uh, some of the teeth in that drive. Rightfully so, and I think even though he was very – very pointed to say, I haven't changed a thing. I haven't changed my driving style. We just have run into bad luck and whatnot. I think his answer to you in victory lane, Brett, and to Marty Snyder on the front stretch was pretty telling. Uh, Marty Snyder didn't even ask him about silencing the doubters, and he went out of his way to say, to all you doubters, this silences you. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but it was clearly weighing on him, and you could tell that something was amiss, whether it was Justin Marks having that conversation whether it was Rick Hendricks speaking out publicly about it. I mean, Ross even admitted that on the NBC post-race show as well, that it's like you don't want to hear when one of the biggest names and the most influential people in the sport is basically saying publicly, this guy's got to clean up his, his you-know-what. And that can weigh on you, especially as a driver who is not necessarily on the younger end, but still is getting their sea legs under them as a experienced Cup Series driver. I think that it can be both things. It can be pressure from internal forces, pressure from external forces. But regardless of all that pressure, it made some diamonds on Sunday night, and he got a pretty cool guitar to show for it as well. Oh, yeah. He was excited about that guitar. I mean, he was like, oh, yeah, we get a guitar. And he jumped out of the car, man, and he was he was guitar overhead. But the, I think another part of this whole thing, Bruce, is not only the criticism I think was weighing on him, but as people begin to criticize, then they find other things to criticize. And his two wins had come at Coda and at Talladega. So it becomes easy for people to go, well, yeah, so he really hasn't won a race that it was a, a, a legitimate track. You know, he's won races at a road course and at Talladega. Those are wild card races. So now he has gone out there and he flat out won that race. That was not handed to him. He won that thing flat out. And you talked about it. Clean passes, beating two of the best. And it's an oval track win on a me intermediate track, and for him, that you know, now there are no arguments. He's got three wins in the Cup Series now, and nobody can say they're not legitimate. What we saw was basically stock car racing. There's, uh, I've always told people, sometimes there's a difference between a stock car race and a NASCAR race at some races because a lot of times with the rules packages and the way they are. That can have a lot to do with the way the racing is. This was old school. This was get out there, drive smart, drive fierce, drive hard. And that is exactly what we saw him do at Nashville. And I think that he probably solidified himself even more for being the star that he is at Nashville than in the previous two victories that he had, even though those are legit victories. I love when people tell me that a guy – wins a range-shortened race, that shouldn't have. Well, he was the first to the checkered flag when the race was called. <laughs> that makes it a victory. Now the check still clears. Yes, that makes it a victory. <laughs> well, and Davey, I think something else that may be lost in this, and people talk about Ross in this, is Trackhouse was starting to, people saying, oh, yeah, it was. they were flashing the pan. They got ahead of everybody until the big teams caught up with this new car. Well, you know what? That was a heck of a car. And the team that he was driving for, that one team, came up with a huge stop on the money stop and got him out there first. They did. It's a team sport, as we know, and they obviously helped that team propel him to victory lane. And I think going back to, to the pressure that we talked about a little bit earlier, whether it was external or internal, a lot of that was because Ross had race-winning cars. He had race-winning speed in those race cars. But unfortunately, instead of winding up in victory lane or in the top five or in the top 10, he wound up on the hook. And Justin Marks was looking at all these wrecked race cars and spending all this money to repair them and buy new clips from the single source supplier saying, what are we doing here? Like we have legit race winning speed in these cars, but yet we don't have anything to show for it. And obviously the calendar shows it had been over a full calendar year since not just Ross had won a race, but the organization overall 
going back to Daniel Suarez at Sonoma a couple weeks back. So that was a big deal, not just to get it done, but Ross won the pole convincingly, had the fastest car throughout the race, was able to navigate lap traffic aggressively but cleanly, something that admittedly he hasn't been able to do all that well throughout his Cup Series career with Trackhouse so far. And the fastest, best car at the end of the race won the race. And I think that is something that's pretty telling as well. This could be the start of a hot summer stretch leading into the playoffs for the one team. All right, well, next up for these guys is, well, it's a first time for everybody, a street course for NASCAR. We're going to find out what these guys think Chicago is going to look like when we come back. Do you use the expensive blue or yellow pills to charge your sex life? Are you thinking about it? What if we can promise you the same results for less than $3 a pill? If you're paying $20 a pill for the other pills, you're getting taken to the cleaners. Our pills deliver the exact same results for less than $3. You'll save more than $16 a pill for the same results. And right now, radio callers will get 44 blue or yellow pills for $120 with free discreet shipping. You can save more than $700 off pharmacy prices. Charge your sex life now and save a ton of money. Call now and get your 44 pills and save over $700 and qualify for free shipping. Stop overpaying and call right now. Paid for by Steel Man Pills. 800-750-9886. 800-750-9886. 800-750-9886. That's 800-750-9886. Want to hear one of our past shows? Visit GoPRN.com. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Kyle, his real name is NASCAR's most popular driver, Chase <laughs> true, I, I, true. I, 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 Is he NASCAR's most popular driver? I think he is popular. People, they gravitate to him. have no idea why. He does not have that magnetism that just comes out, like Daniel Suarez, a Clint Boyer, where they just have so much personality, you just want to sit down and talk to them sometimes. Hi, this is Doug Rice of PRN. Join me every Monday night for another great episode of Fast Talk. When the sun goes down, the lights come on, and NASCAR stars shine under the lights. A free, massive fireworks show on Independence Day, a weekend of concerts, and a pair of prime-time NASCAR showdowns. It's Atlanta's can't-miss summer event, the Quaker State 400, available at Walmart. Get your tickets to Atlanta's night race, atlantamotorspeedway.com. Lights, camera, engines. Check out all of our show pages on GoPRN.com to find archive shows and more. Now, back to the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters with Brett McMillan. And welcome back along with Davey Siegel from NASCAR Radio Sirius XM and also Bruce Martin from Speed Sport. Brett McMillan, glad to have you with us. All right, Davey, we're going to see something brand new this week. Do we have any idea what we're going to see? No. And if somebody tells you yes, they're lying to you. <laughs> I have no idea what we're going to see, right? I mean, look, we, we know street course racing is not in NASCAR's DNA. It's not totally rare. We, we've we seen it back in the 90s with the Winston West Series. I believe the Arkham Menard Series ran a street race in Des Moines, Iowa, of all places. I think back before I was born, maybe. But regardless, I am so amped for this weekend. I, I love when NASCAR does big events. And they've done more of those in the past handful of years, as we know, the Clash being one of them, North Wilkesboro being one of them, Chicago being one of them, maybe even the biggest one and potentially the biggest undertaking, giving the political ramifications of just dealing with a major metropolitan city like this. I'm so hyped for it. And no, I have no idea what to expect, Brett, but that's part of the beauty of it, right? If you knew what you were going to see going into, I'm using a random example here, Texas, New Hampshire, Kansas, Vegas, whatever, you know, it, those are good racetracks, ones that we like going to, but predictable to a certain extent. You can look back on past results and know who's going to be fast, know what the caution trends are going to be like. We don't know anything going into this weekend. That, I think, is the beauty of it. And kind of like Kevin Harvick said before the first iteration of the Bush Light Clash at the Coliseum, before cars were even on track, he said that this event was a success just because of the fact that they were able to put a racetrack in a football stadium. 
I personally feel the same way with the Chicago street course race. The fact that they're making this happen in and of itself is a huge win for not just NASCAR, but I think greater motorsports. Well, Bruce, you know Chicago pretty well. So how's this thing going to play out? I don't know whether which is uh, more appropriate, whether NASCAR is ready for Chicago or whether Chicago is ready for NASCAR. Both. Yes. In a <laughs> lot of ways, it's going to it's going to have its moments of chaos. That's for sure, because you're taking one of the major arteries of that city, Lakeshore Drive, which has been renamed DuSable Lakeshore Drive, and you're going to turn part of that into the race course. Now, the streets that are Belbo and Columbus are part of the streets that go through Grant Park. So that's what you use to cut over from Lakeshore Drive to maybe get on the Michigan Avenue. Michigan Avenue, another key street in the city of Chicago, traffic-wise, is going to be part of the race course. There's going to be a lot of people. That city on a good day is a traffic nightmare. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to find their routine has been dramatically disrupted that may or may not have any interest in the actual race itself that are going to be pretty vocal. And that's one of the problems that I think they're going to have more in Chicago than they had with the LA Coliseum because the LA Coliseum was a football stadium. Didn't really affect anybody in Chicago. When people's daily routines are disrupted, it becomes a major controversy. And that's one of the things that's going to be interesting to see how NASCAR and the city of Chicago is able to deal with that. The other thing is Grant Park is the, premier park for that city that is one of the great hallmarks the landmarks of that city and it's also near all the great museums the art institute the adler planetarium the shed aquarium the field museum of natural history all the people going to those things for a fourth of july weekend are going to be impacted and that's going to be a very telling thing to see how well that goes over it is going to be interesting, and you know, hey, for the NASCAR fans, they got some places to go. It's a, it's like right it's there. A it's a great million, place yeah, to go. Like, isn't that the million dollar mile right along Magnificent there? Magnificent mile. Okay, well, yes. close enough. And it, but you, could, you could spend a million dollars on that mile. You so can, beautiful, it's worth a million bucks, Brett. Yeah, you, you can <laughs> stay in one of those great hotels that line up and down Michigan Avenue, and not even you know leave the car parked or not even have a car, and you're going to have some of the greatest restaurants within walking distance. It's going to be a fantastic place. For spectators to go, I'm going to be a little interested to see how the quality of racing is because with temporary barriers, these aren't sports cars that will be hitting them. They're not Indy cars that will be hitting them that are half the weight of a stock car. I was talking to Steve Latart at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway during the Indianapolis 500. He says these barriers are going to move when a stock car hits them, and he expects they'll probably be, you know, if there is a crash, it's going to take a while to get the course back in shape. And that's going to be one of the big things as to, you know, how much of this race will be run under yellow? Will there even be some red flags? It may not be from an artistic standpoint, but the sheer fact that they're attempting to take on a project of this magnitude is really commendable in many ways because it, it, it's almost like when you shot Alan Shepard in the space the first time, you didn't know whether it was going to work or not. Well, Davey, how important is the quality of racing going to be? And, and I, that, that's a weird question to ask, but we know it's going to be a big party. Is the festival atmosphere going to be the most important thing? And it, maybe that will be for the people on site, but I know a lot more fans are going to be watching on TV or listening to the radio. Right. Short term, I would say yes, to be frank. But I think when you look at this event, two, three years down the road. And I know that the, the city and NASCAR have a, a multi-year agreement. I'm sure that the contract is as good as the paper it's written on. But for the short term, I think that the event is the main draw. And that is what is most important. I mean, I know that the chain smokers may not be everybody's favorite type of music, but in my demographic, my friends, that that's a big get. And to have them the same place, same time for the Chicago street race, that is a, a really, really big deal. Now, the racing itself, you know, a lot of people when the course was first unveiled they were kind of skeptical and saying i don't think there's going to be a lot of passing zones here and you know kyle bush saying every turns like turn one of the indianapolis road course which if that's the case buckle up but i think that the racing is important obviously don't get me wrong but for year one specifically it's not the most important thing and that's crazy to say but i felt the same way with the clash at the coliseum a couple years back i felt a similar way to a certain extent with north wilkesboro earlier this year Going back to the events conversation and the events component 
of what Ben Kennedy is doing, trying to head up these new different type of races and events for NASCAR, for the sanctioning body, the racing still should remain paramount. But the fan experience is just as, if not more important than the actual on-track product, especially to try to get new fans in. And Elton Sawyer, who's a senior vice president of competition for NASCAR, he told us on Sirius XM this week that about 82% of the fans that have bought tickets to this event are new fans. And that is very reminiscent of the rhetoric that we heard from them for the first class race. So again, their goal is to have a good race first and foremost, but probably as a one B to that is to have a really fun top notch event. And I think on paper, they're set up well to do that. Do you see it the same, Bruce? That's why I think one of the things that NASCAR drivers need to be cognizant of is this is the first time many people with a different demographic are coming to a NASCAR race it's not going to be the old school NASCAR crowd that we see at ovals or at short tracks. It's a new group of fans. If I was a team owner, I'd tell every driver, whatever you do, when you get out of that car, go sign some autographs, go talk mm -hmm. to some fans because these are new people. And if we can get them hooked, then we can grow our fan base. But if they go in there and they go from hauler to the motor home and try to stay away from the spectators, then, you know, they're not going to get the experience that the opportunity is out there for NASCAR to grow. And that's what Ben Kennedy is trying to do with this type of event. I would really like to see the drivers go along with that and maybe make some friends out of these new fans because to them, you know, they're used to going to baseball games or, or NFL games or things like that. And they don't ever get a chance to get that close to the participants. And this is an opportunity where they can see a driver and I think that it behooves NASCAR to do a little bit of PR in that regard with the spectators and try to cultivate new fans. I want to do a little deeper dive into what NASCAR can accomplish with this Chicago race. And I think there are a couple of things that we're going to look at you know, more seriously. And we'll do that when we come back. We work hard to keep our cars looking great on the outside, but engine components need our attention too. That's where you can trust Z-Max Micro Lubricant to disperse carbon buildup in your engine fuel system to keep your car or truck running at its peak. By soaking into the metal of your engine, Z-Max Micro Lubricant improves performance, extends engine life, and reduces emissions. Trust the many customers who've said, thanks for saving my engine. Find out more at ZMAX.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. When the sun goes down, the lights come on, and NASCAR stars shine under the lights. A free, massive fireworks show on Independence Day, a weekend of concerts, and a pair of primetime NASCAR showdowns. It's Atlanta's can't-miss summer event, the Quaker State 400, available at Walmart. Get your tickets to Atlanta's night race, atlantamotorspeedway.com. Lights, camera, engines. We've got more of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters in a moment. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Hey there, it's Kathy Martindale and Paul Shad on ZMAX Racing Country Classic. Hey, we're back. Come on to Nashville. It's Kathy and Vince Gill. Who do you find it hardest to keep up with, musicianship-wise? I just feel like an adequate guitar player compared to some of the people that I just love and admire and really think are spectacular. The majority of the people that I learned to play the instrument from are still around. Z-Max Racing Country Classic. I've been driving trucks for a long time. Safety is my number one priority. I know that my truck has huge blind spots. That's why I remember to check my mirrors often for smaller vehicles. Everyone can help keep our roads safe. Next time you're behind the wheel, try to avoid lingering in those blind spots. It can be dangerous. Let's all plan to share the road safely. Learn how at www.sharetheroadsafely.gov. Check us out on YouTube at GoPRN Live. Now, more of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters with Brett McMillan. Hey, welcome back, along with Bruce Martin from Speed Sport and also Davey Siegel from NASCAR Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. I'm Brett McMillan. Glad to have you with us. You know, Davey was talking about earlier that Elton Sawyer was on 
their show earlier this week uh, on the morning drive and said that 82% of the people who bought tickets for this race at Chicago are new fans. And I'm wondering what, what is NASCAR's, what do you think the biggest goal is for NASCAR this weekend, Bruce? And I think my opinion, proof of concept, if this street course race works and, uh, and we talked in the last segment, is it going to be great racing? We don't know. But if it works from a racing standpoint, you get a, some decent racing, they prove this concept works, and now all of a sudden you can look at going places like Denver, market you haven't been in, the Northwest, market, you know, Seattle, a market you're in, or internationally where you don't have to worry about somebody building a track for you to go there. Well, that's definitely, and if you go back 30, 40 years, that's exactly what the old kart series had figured out when they were IndyCar racing back then. And they basically brought the show to the people as opposed to a lot of the racetracks that everybody raced at are out in remote areas and the people would have to go to the show. So by bringing the show to the people, if you remember, there was a uh, street race around the Meadowlands for a while, the Meadowlands Grand Prix in New York. That was a big deal. By being able to do that, take the show to the people, now you can get more people interested in the product. And when you get more people interested in the product, then the sponsor gets a better return on their investment and everybody wins. What's going to be interesting to see is putting on a street race is not a cheap endeavor, NASCAR is able to do it because NASCAR has a lot of resources behind it. I can only imagine what the cost is, the overhead to put on this event in the city of Chicago. How big is the Chicago street race? Well, for about 40 years, they had an event called Taste of Chicago every year, 4th of July weekend, where the restaurants in the Chicago area would have a, a festival in Grant Park. That has been moved to September in order to accommodate NASCAR with this street race. A lot of people have been used to, oh, it's 4th of July weekend, we'll go to Taste of Chicago at Grant Park. So by doing that, now you're changing the way people think of things. Here's another thing. I've heard people talk about, oh, you know, well, you know, going there, that, that's, that's just not going to work. Well, they have Lollapalooza there every summer. And Lollapalooza is one of the biggest music festivals of the year. That doesn't seem to disrupt the city too much. In fact, the city has embraced Lollapalooza. Perhaps over time, the city will embrace this. And I'm talking about people who probably aren't going to go to the race. They just don't want their lives disrupted, but they're not, their lives are not disrupted or they've put up with basically accepted what happens when Lollapalooza's in town. Doesn't seem to be that big a deal. I think there are more people in NASCAR land that are projecting the fact that it might be chaos then there really are people that think that there will be chaos. Well, I know one of the things, David, they've talked about is uh, in, in Chicago, it's going to be they estimate $3 million in, ex, in a, ex extra tax income from the race. But when you look at it, what do you see as maybe the most important thing NASCAR is looking? I mean, we talked about new fans. Is it proof of concept? Is it great racing? Is it is it just that they can th put on a great party? I think it's all of those things, but proof of concept for me, you know, long term from a 30,000 foot view is probably the biggest thing because, you know, Bruce, to your point, street racing, it can happen anywhere. And it has in the past NASCAR. They've even done it with the lower levels, as we mentioned earlier, but it's not what NASCAR is known for. And it's not the NASCAR that people have come to know, love and appreciate. But this is not a conversation about NASCAR's cop series becoming a road course series, a street course series, nothing of the sort. But Brett, I mean, I'm partial to this, and so are you. Could you imagine cup cars ripping back, ripping down Pennsylvania Avenue and going by the White House or the Washington Monument or even down at Nats Park Navy Yard? Like me personally, I'd pay good money to see that. But I think that the the fact that this is already kind of a success in my eyes again means that the proof of concept is kind of working. Now we'll see. You know, in, in the aftermath of it in terms of cleaning up the course and making sure that everything is in tip top shape for the regular people and the hustle and bustle and everybody to have their commutes back to normal. And also if the racing, again, if it's not up to par, then that's kind of a moot point, but the events team that's putting on the Chicago street race, I believe Bruce is the same one that puts on Lollapalooza in Grant park in the same exact space. Taylor Swift, I believe just played her heirs tour a few or a couple nights 
right in the same very venue that NASCAR is going to be racing in a few days' time. So proof of concept is a big thing. The racing product itself is a big thing. Making sure it feels like and is a major event is a big thing. And for me, you know, being a 26-year-old guy, I have a lot of friends that graduated from Michigan State with me that live in Chicago right now. They know me as the NASCAR guy, right? And they've all been talking to me for the last several months saying, oh, I heard about this like a a, a, f- a couple months ago, but now it's actually happening. How, how do I get a ticket? Like, what should I do? That is a big win, right? And not everybody is going to be happy. Not everybody's going to be pleased. It's not going to tickle everybody's fancy. But if you get people's attention and some of those people that have your attention, if you can then get them to the racetrack, as we know, once you get them there, hard part's done. You just got to have them see it with their own eyes. So oh. proof of concept is a big thing, but making sure that the event itself is exactly that, an event, which they've already done, that's just as big. And one thing, Bruce, that a lot of people have been concerned about has been the crime that's been going on in Chicago. It's a lot of attention. They're worried about this is going to be a big issue on this race weekend, but with the geography of the city and where it, what's going on, it shouldn't be an issue. That isn't anywhere close to the neighborhoods where the crime is happening in Chicago. Uh, the part of Chicago where the race is happening is the glamour part of Chicago. That's It's the postcard part of Chicago. It's like I tell everybody, I go, when's the last time you heard anybody have crime leaving a Chicago Bears game from Soldier Field, which will be right around where the course is located? When's the last time you've heard of high crime after Lollapalooza? You haven't. That's not the part of the city where the crime issue is happening. That's happening more in neighborhoods in the south side of Chicago and in other areas on the west side. Yes, crime is an issue in a big city, especially in Chicago. That's not the area. And anybody that brings that part up as the NASCAR, you know, it's going to affect the NASCAR. No, no, not, not there. But. You know, the crime issue does need to be addressed in a city like Chicago, just like in a lot of big cities in this country. But that is one of the premier areas of the city and one of the safer areas of the city also. Well, and I think one of the things you're going to end up doing this week, Davey, is there are going to be a lot of beauty shots. If you're watching this on TV, there are going to be a lot of beauty shots you're going to see, not only showcasing NASCAR, but showcasing the city of Chicago, because that is a pretty area right there, Lakeside. It's going to look great. It is. And even last week on, on the NBC telecast, when they were doing their live hits with Parker Kligerman there, and they had the the blimp shot of the drone shot, it looked awesome. And I think, again, that's one of the main takeaways for me is that it just looks visually really, really cool. Just like the overhead blimp shot did when there is a literal racetrack inside of the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, partly because it's never been, ha- never been done before, partly because nobody ever thought that it could be done, and partly because we're there. NASCAR is there. They are running on Lakeshore Drive or Bruce, whatever it's renamed now. I'm not a Chicago guy, so I'm sorry. Um, but also, like, it's just really cool to have the vibe of NASCAR running down those streets in the tight corners with the fountain in the middle, all the happenings that are going on there. And you can't get a bad bite to eat anywhere in the vicinity either. And just real quick on, on the crime aspect as well. I think everything you said, Bruce, is 100% spot on every major metropolitan city is going to have crime but every city has pockets that are quote unquote safer or more dangerous than the other ones chicago's no different st louis is no different i didn't hear a lot of outcry when we were at worldwide technology raceway a handful of weeks ago about the crime in the surrounding areas of madison illinois or st louis i don't hear it when we're in kansas city for kansas or insert any racetrack here literally any other racetrack on the schedule that is by a major metropolitan area It's a major city. You're going to have crime, but I don't think it's anything to worry about this weekend because, A, you're in a pretty sizable, safe part of the city, and also there's going to be a heavy, heavy security force this weekend, just like there is for Lollapalooza, just like there are for any other major sporting events at Soldier Field or the United Center. NASCAR Chicago Street Race is going to be no different, if not even better. All right, if you want a Chicago deep deep dish pizza, make sure you're hungry. I got reservations at Lou I'm way ahead of you. Now, as a Chicago guy, I'll tell you right now, <laughs> when it comes to the go-to pizza for anybody from Chicago that they eat every I'm week, listening. they eat the thin crust. The tourists go to the deep dish places because, as people from Chicago know, if you ate that as your go-to pizza every week, you'd weigh 400 pounds. Oh, that's true. Absolutely <laughs> true. Uh, are the White Sox in town this weekend? 
Uh, they were in town last weekend when they, they actually had NASCAR night of last Friday night, which, uh, you know, the car was there and they're, yeah. they're actually sponsoring a car in the race. So oh, I yeah, give them credit Dillon's for car. that. Oh, but give them credit instead of the Cubs. Yeah. As bad, as bad as the White Sox have been this season, they need all the, <laughs> the promotion they can. There get. you go. Well, each week in the Rally Auto Parts Pit Reporters, we give you a chance to go to goprn.com and vote in our poll and this week's question is, what can NASCAR accomplish with the Chicago street race? And your choices are proof of concept, more street races to come, get a lot of new fans that they can put on a party, or all of the above. And last week we asked you, who will be the next driver to win his first race of 2023? Well, the question has already been answered. It is Ross Chastain, and 39% of you said it's Ross Chastain. Also, we got 37% said it's going to be Chase Elliott. Kevin Harvick came in third, and not a lot of confidence in Chris Busher. All right, when we come back, what's going to happen with the media rights? Is Xfinity still going to put all the races on streaming? Stay with us. How would you like to get high-speed internet for your home for less than $2 a day? That's right. For about 50 bucks a month, you'll get lightning-fast internet. Are you paying less than 50 bucks a month right now for your internet? Then call Whole Home Connect right now for blazing fast internet at 50 bucks a month with no price increases, no hidden fees, no contracts, no upfront costs, no equipment fees. It's a great deal. And guess what? You can try it for 15 days. If you don't like it, you get your money back. But you're going to love it. And you're going to love the price. Internet for your home for 50 bucks a month. That's less than 2 bucks a day. Plus, no contracts, no upfront costs, no equipment fees, and our 15-day guarantee. Call now. 800-748-0593. 800-748-0593. That's 800-748-0593. More of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters in a moment. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Time to pull down on the handle and start rolling them here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. The green flag flies at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. We're about to contest the Coca-Cola 600. We're racing at Texas Motor Speedway. <laughs> now Keselowski goes way up the racetrack. Here comes Harrison Burton. He rockets to the lead. Trouble. Car goes around. It's Chris Buescher. Joey Logano battles to the outside. They come back to the start finish line. Bubba Wallace looks inside. And now here's Byron. Takes a quick left to block him. They head back to one. Here goes Ross Chastain. He's going to the bottom of the racetrack. Bubba goes up. Delaney hits the outside wall off of turn two. Can Christopher Bell do anything with him? He gets down to the bottom of the racetrack. Frisco dives to the bottom of the racetrack side by side. They get loose. They spin. Now Tyler Reddick does the 360. So does Frisco. Heading into turn number seven as he wraps it around. The crowd is cheering for Daniel Suarez here on this final lap. Oba Digger gets into Alex Bowman. Ross Chastain back out to the front for the final time. This is PRN. Download our free mobile app to listen to the show and more great PRN content on the go. Now back to the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters. And hey, welcome back with Davey Siegel from Sirius XM NASCAR Radio, Bruce Martin from Speed Sport. I'm Brett McMillan. Glad to have you with us. All right, Davey, we're getting close, apparently, to having the TV deal starting in 2025 all wrapped up. It still sounds like... Fox and NBC will be back for at least most of the season, but there's still talk that we might, might get that kind of TNT like middle of the season, six race package for somebody and that might be Amazon's kind of the leading candidate. I know fans may not like that, but you know, we talked a couple weeks ago, Davey, Hey, the NFL has announced that one of their playoff games is going to be on streaming only this year. Yeah, it's coming. It's actually here, so you might as well hop on the train before it leaves the station entirely. You know, when when Fox and NBC obviously signed that, I think it was a 10-year, multi-billion dollar deal, in hindsight, that's kind of what kept the sport alive during COVID. That was probably one of Brian France's greatest legacies as the chairman and CEO of the sport. But streaming is, is here. It, it's not just coming. It is here, and it's full-fledged. It's going to be here to stay. NASCAR would be 
so, so naive to just blatantly ignore that. So, of course, they're not because they're smart. They actually know what they're doing, contrary to popular belief by some of the fans out there. So whether it's Amazon, whether it's Apple TV, whether it's Hulu, Netflix, whatever streaming service does come into play, and obviously Peacock being one of those as an incumbent NBC partner as well, there are going to be some practice sessions, qualifying sessions, races, on a streaming service of some sort. I don't know how many. I don't know which ones. I don't know when, where, how, what, why. All I know is that it's going to happen. Now, I have some streaming services. I don't have all of them. And I know that a lot of people out there do not. And that probably is the biggest hurdle for them. The biggest barrier to entry is the fact that I don't want to pay for something that I need to get if I already am getting everything by not paying any extra. It's fair, understandable. But down the road, looking five, ten years down the road, who knows what the future of cable television is going to look like and who knows what the future of streaming is going to look like. Would you guys believe me if I told you five or ten years ago they'd race in a stadium, they'd race on the streets of Chicago, Nashville would be back, North Wilkesboro would be back, the fairgrounds is getting ready to be revived? Probably not. Change is inevitable. It happens. I know it's not easy. Streaming is just the latest and greatest in terms of the change that NASCAR is not immune to. Uh, 15 years ago, if you told Bruce and I that uh, newspapers would almost cease to exist, we wouldn't have thought you were crazy. We would have thought you were crazy. Well, the problem <laughs> with newspapers, the problem with a real a regular newspaper is they're printing yesterday's news tomorrow. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's a whole other story. Fun and yeah, but, but but that's the thing. That's how much it changed. And you know, I I said at the time that. You know, as you talked about, Davey, when you talk about the 10-year contract in 2015, I couldn't have sat there in 2015 and and said, looking back on 2005, thinking I had no idea what the landscape, what the media landscape would have looked like in 2015, sitting there in, in 2005, the way it had developed. And you, I mean, just talking about, you know, what did the media center used to be filled with? People who were writing for newspapers. There, there are basically no people writing for newspapers or almost no people writing for newspapers in the media center anymore. There's almost no newspapers left Yeah, exactly. Anymore. And those who still do cover it will oftentimes have the local paper in that area, be it a Gannett paper or whatever, and then they'll end up, their story will end up going all the other Gannett papers. So you really lose the local flavor of that. But getting back to the streaming thing, you hear more people talking about Ted Lasso than you hear them talking about the latest, greatest show on regular network TV. I'm not so sure that many people watch shows on regular network TV during the weeknight like they did back when we were coming up. But they can tell you about the full season of Ted Lasso and tell you every detail what happened. Same thing with Drive to Survive, the what really kind of catapulted Formula One to another level that they're enjoying right now. Um, Streaming is here. There's a lot of people that are kicking and screaming that don't want any part of streaming because it's an extra service they have to pay. But, you know, it's going to be here, and when you get more and more premier sporting events on streaming, you're going to have no choice. But if you want to watch them, you're going to end up having to pay for streaming. NASCAR definitely has to have some type of streaming involved with their package, What form that'll be, whether it be this TV contract or a later TV contract, you know, that remains to be seen, but they have to get that direction going with the current TV contract just to see how they can organize it and orchestrate it. I know a couple weeks ago we talked about uh, the report from the Sports Business Journal that they were looking at streaming all of the Xfinity races and now they're reporting that NASCAR appears to be backing off from that, that there might be a couple of different services that have the Xfinity races and that they won't all be streamed, that there'll be some will actually be on broadcast TV or cable TV or whatever, you know what I'm talking about, that it won't all be just streaming only. So that's an interesting change. When we come back, we're going to talk about who really needs to get going here on the last nine races of the regular season if they hope to make the playoffs Uh, I think there's a guy in the number nine car that might have to get himself a trip to victory lane here pretty soon. We'll talk about that when we come back.
When it comes to maintaining your engine to run at peak performance, trust ZMAX Micro Lubricant. ZMAX soaks into metal and it's so easy to add to your oil or gas to disperse carbon buildup in your engine, fuel system, and transmission. Protect your vehicle's engine to the max with ZMAX. Check us out at ZMAX.com or visit us on Facebook and Twitter to find out more about our full line of products. ZMAX for your car, big rigs, small engines, firearms, and more. That's ZMAX Micro Lubricant, available at your favorite auto parts store. There are only eight left in the NASCAR playoffs when they come to Vegas. Who will take home the win? Playoff weekend returns, and it's going to be much cooler. It's October 13th through 15th, the South Point 400 NASCAR playoff race. Kids tickets are just $10 on Sunday, free on Saturday. And Friday is free to everyone. That's right, everyone. Concerts, camping, kids fun, we have everything to make the experience one for the memory books. Las Vegas Motor Speedway, October 13th through 15th. Brett McMillan returns with his guests in just a moment. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Hi, it's PRN's Brad Gilley. Did you know you could take PRN with you anywhere? That's right. By downloading the PRN mobile app, you can listen to our live race broadcast from anywhere. Make sure you don't miss a second of the action from the track. Download today for station listings and on-demand access to your favorite studio shows like Fast Talk, The Pit Reporters, or Garage Pass. Get all the latest racing information at your fingertips with the PRN mobile app. Available in the Apple App Store and on Google Play. Hey, I'm Corley Joy for Speedway Children's Charities. The mission for Speedway Children's Charities has remained true since its founding almost 40 years ago, to care for children in educational, financial, social, and medical needs in order to help them lead happy and productive lives. So many children have benefited from our group in the past, but we need your help now more than ever. There's so much we can do when we all join together, so let's start today. Visit speedwaycharities.org to learn more. I thank you in advance for your help. Get your short track racing fix with PRNs at the track. Visit GoPRN.com. Now, more of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters. And welcome back, along with Bruce Martin from Speed Sport and Davey Siegel from Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. I'm Brett McMillan. Glad to have you with us. All right, nine races to go on the regular season, Bruce. And a bunch of guys. We've got 11 different winners. A bunch of guys without a win right now, uh, including... One, Chase Elliott. And I think it's pretty safe to assume Chase is not going to make the playoffs on points. Right now he is, let's see, 64 points behind 16th. So I think it's pretty safe to assume he's not going to make up that 64 points. It's not even that the points, it's how many people you, you know, he's in 25th place. That's a lot of guys to get past to get to 16th. But how do you feel about his chances of winning a race in the next nine? I think he can win a race. Um, Chase is good enough to win almost anywhere he gets into the race car. You talk about nine to go, so my candidates for the drivers that really need to do something in the last nine are, of course, the nine and the 99. Now, Daniel Suarez has had some bad luck, but he's got pretty good equipment, and it's conceivable that daniel suarez can have a pretty good day and win a race so that would then get both track house cars into the playoffs uh as you recall daniel suarez did a really good job last year when he was in the playoffs if it wasn't for the roval where the power steering went out and he had to arm wrestle that car around the track most of the race that he would have easily advanced into the next round so if I'm going to go to the roulette wheel, I'm going to put all my dollars down on nine because you got nine to go, and the two car numbers that I'm looking at are nine and the 99. Ooh. There you go. If you like you like numerology, Davey? How can you not? After that sell job, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, might, I might put all my money on the nines too. Um, but I, I don't disagree with him, to be honest. I mean, Daniel Suarez, he's too above the cut line right now, but that's obviously pretty much a toss-up with him and Alex Bowman. I'm looking at Chase Elliott as well. To answer your question, Brett, I feel okay about his chances to win in the next nine, but that's not really what I'm accustomed to saying or feeling when it comes to 
Chase Elliott potentially winning a race. Even he said it, you know, they need to just get back to running well. And his season has just been so herky jerky. You run a race or two, you get hurt. You're out for a month or two. Then you come back, you run a couple races, you're suspended for another week. You run another race, then you're at the off weekend. And now we're where we are right now. So there's been no rhythm to his season overall. And I think that's part of the reason why you haven't seen the nine team ripping off top fives after top fives. And it's been a bit inconsistent. And his teammate, Alex Bowman, who's also missed some time due to injury, also gotten a points penalty. He's right below the cut line as well. So just imagine if he was able to compete in every race and not get that points penalty. I'm watching Chase Elliott. I'm also watching a couple road course ringers, so to speak. AJ Allmendinger, Michael McDowell. You can throw Austin Sindrick into that mix if you'd like as well. Three of the only drivers that I believe have street course experience. You had Shane Van Ginsbergen into the mix. You had Andy, Andy Lally into the mix. And you have five guys, but three of those that legitimately have a chance of winning a race and getting their way into the playoffs. You got Indy, you got Chicago, you got the Glen. If you want to throw in Daytona as the regular season finale for good measure, that's four chances at a potential win to maybe sneak one out on a road course or get lucky, put yourself in the right place at the right time and execute on a super speedway. Chase Elliott, he's probably going to have to win. It's possible to point his way in. Not probable, though. The other guys, I think, besides Chase Elliott and besides those guys that are hovering at the cut line, Bowman and Suarez, you're probably going to have to win because I don't see anything changing. All right, here's the interesting part that I'm looking at. And, Dave, you just put off, rattle off a bunch of names of guys that could win and who are below 16th right now. So you got Chris Bushers in 12th. He doesn't have a win. 13th is Reddick. He's got a win. Stenhouse is 14th. He has a win. Then Bubba is 15th without a win. So between Bubba and, and Busher, there are 68, no, I'm sorry, 58 points between those guys. Doing quick math. Then Suarez is 28 more points back behind Bubba. So all of a sudden you go Ty Gibbs, surprisingly good rookie season, 18th. Almendinger 19th, McDowell 20th. Any of those guys win, that all of a sudden bumps Bubba up onto the cut line. Two of those guys win, now all of a sudden Busher and 12th on the cut line. I mean, those guys become super dangerous. And I would uh, basically say A.J. Almendinger is a pretty good bet to run pretty well at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway road course. I mean, that's a track. And Watkins that, Glen. Yes, and Watkins Glen. And, I mean, he could he could win both of those races, to be honest with you. And this weekend, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a guy that I say is going to win a race and, and win his way in. 23-11 is interesting because there are some weeks where Bubba looks really, really good. And then there are other weeks where you don't even realize that they're out there. So it'll be interesting to see in these nine races going up which uh, Bubba Wallace 23-11 we get, you know, which race they pick to have a really good race. Not that they choose it, of course, but just saying the way racing plays itself out. I could still see him winning a race in these final races going up to the cut line. But there are some pretty good drivers there that could really surprise and shock some people when it comes to deciding the 16 that are going to get into the playoffs. All right, 11 winners, I think we're pretty safe right now that we're not going to eliminate a guy with a win this year, though we came darn close to it last year. When we come back, white flag lap, stay with us. Hey, airline. There's more of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters still to come. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. We're actually racing in Chicago on wow. the streets. What do you expect? No idea. I've never seen a street race with cup cars. This is going to be something new. I know what Trans Am looks like. I know what IndyCar looks like. I know what other, other series looks like. It's going to be interesting to see what the cup cars look like on the streets of Chicago. It's going to be interesting to see how the city of Chicago embraces NASCAR. Hi, this is Doug Rice of PRN. Join me every Monday night for another great episode of Fast Talk. 
There are only eight left in the NASCAR playoffs when they come to Vegas. Who will take home the win? Playoff weekend returns, and it's going to be much cooler. It's October 13th through 15th, the South Point 400 NASCAR playoff race. Kids tickets are just $10 on Sunday, free on Saturday. And Friday is free to everyone. That's right, everyone. Concerts, camping, kids fun, we have everything to make the experience one for the memory books. Las Vegas Motor Speedway, October 13th through 15th. Hey, airline travelers, let's say you have a problem and you need to change or cancel an existing airline reservation. What do you do? Well, Skywatch is a free service that can help anyone with any airline reservation fix it. Whether you want to cancel it, change your dates, or add passengers, we can help fix your airline reservations so you get exactly what you need. We've updated our computer database and now have access to every airline around the globe. So now you can make one phone call, regardless of who booked your airline tickets, and we'll change it, cancel it, and fix it for you. We know the insider secrets to fixing reservations that the airlines don't want you to know about. So if you need to cancel, change, or modify an existing airline reservation, call Skywatch right now. It's a free call, so let us fix it for you. 800-397-6805. 800-397-6805. 800-397-6805. That's 800-397-6805. Follow at PRN Live on Twitter for show news and information. Now more of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters with Brett McMillan. Hey, welcome back. Time now for our white flag laps. And first up from Sirius XM NASCAR Radio, it's Davey Siegel. Just want to give a shout out to NASCAR, Ben Kennedy, Steve Phelps, Steve O'Donnell, everybody involved for just making it happen. They are not afraid to take risks. This new leadership, we have seen that time and time again. We mentioned the clash. We mentioned North Wilkesboro. He can add the Chicago street course to that mix. I don't think that we would have seen this a handful of years ago. So I applaud NASCAR and the leadership for being willing and able to take a chance. And there's no place, Brett and Bruce, that I'd rather spend my birthday on July 2nd than watching NASCAR tear up the streets of Chicago. I cannot wait. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your birthday dinner at Liberetto's. Wherever I'm going. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. All right. Next up from Speed Sport, it's Bruce Martin. When it comes to the Chicago street race, I don't know which is going to be more difficult for the entire field to get through turn one on the start of the race or to get a uh, a table at Gene and Giorgetti's uh, Steakhouse <laughs> or at Gibson's or any of the other great restaurants in that city. As someone who has spent an awful lot of their life in the city of Chicago, it's almost surreal to think that this is happening. And it really does go back to the fact that when Ben Kennedy thinks of something, he thinks of something big. And this is another example of one thing you got to give NASCAR credit for. They're not afraid to take big swings. And this is probably the biggest swing that they've taken. It's a bigger swing than even going to the L.A. Coliseum with the Bush Clash. So a lot of, cre uh, a lot of credit needs to go NASCAR's way for thinking big. Well, you know, Ross Chastain has no doubt been a polarizing figure the last couple of years. Me, I like the guy. He's personable, and he's worked hard to get where he is today, and he has earned it. And many times over the last year or so, I've told you guys that he's been the victim of the time-honored tradition of veterans trying to intimidate the newcomers that they see as threats. The hope by the veterans is that the newcomers will back down and then disappear. Chastain, to his credit, has not backed down. Had there been lessons learned along the way? Absolutely. But to his team owner, Justin Mark's credit, he stood behind his driver and let Chastain digest the lessons while knowing that he still had the confidence of those who supported him. I don't know what Chastain could put into words what Nashville really meant to him by winning that race. It was his first on a track that wasn't referred to, as we talked about, as a wild card, and it put to rest the rumblings that he couldn't win without being overly aggressive. Yep, the watermelon man is here to stay, and the sport is better with him in it. Well, Davey, who do you got this week? Who do you think is going to win this thing at Chicago? MJ's driver in MJ's town, Tyler Reddick. Ooh, how do you like that? Bruce? That's a pretty good uh, pick. I'm going to go with Kyle Busch because I just think that he seems to be having a pretty good year, and that would be uh, something that would get him on the map uh, pretty good. 
I'm going to go with Joey Logano because he always wins at the first races at places. We'll see. All right. Hey, enjoy Chicago. We'll love talking about it with you next week. See you then. The O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters on the Performance Racing Network was presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts, your professional parts people. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network.